Right, that signals the beginning of uh, your favorite talk show, most interactive talk show on live TV right here on Rwanda Television. It is In Focus O'Clock. And my name as always is Eugene Anangwe. Thank you so much for making time and being part of this particular program. Every Sunday we get to meet here just to be able to put an item on the table just to make sense out of it and get interactive on this. This is an interactive show. All you need to do is keep tweeting and the hashtag as always is in focus rw let's take a look at what indeed we'll be talking about tonight everyone does say that it is very important for uh employers to actually invest in their employees as far as human development is concerned but the question is is this easier said than done what practical measures can be taken to ensure that this actually happens are employers doing enough to ensure that their employees feel appreciated plus of course who does the human development for their boss this is the question we ask ourselves right on the program we have a very able panel i'll be introducing them shortly let's take a look at what you are already saying on twitter uh we have shooting babazi lucy babazi says that employer of choice means hierarchy is only on paper i know of many companies where the issue of hierarchy really does play even practically and of course she continues to say team plans and executed together collaborative example or at the top and of course collective success competitive compensation with especially great healthcare packages clear career path and leadership for all these are the qualities of uh, an institution where uh, human development does happen what does olive say she says that most employers do not take employee career growth seriously all they care about is you delivering your task of course i know of even some employers who would not be happy some of them would not be happy when they see you even growing there's that kind of competition at workplaces we'll be talking a bit about that right here on the program of course you need to be able to tag us hashtag in focus rw of course i'm going to start the conversation and there's this man one year ago who took to the streets with a billboard to look for a job and this is very interesting the guy i'm sure this picture might be blurry a bit but what happens here is that he went and put up a billboard and put it up there please give me a job and my name is patrick mudomi he put his contacts and he qualified actually uh with a cpa section four this is a person who has gone through education and of course we'll be trying to ask ourselves how do learning institutions empower and of course uh, invest in the human development of those people who go for learning institutions there you have it let's take a look at the panelists that we have right here on the program of course making a comeback on the show several months and years ago welcome again on the program mire ineza carrera who's actually the ceo of cora coaching group thank you for joining us on the program thank you for having me it's and always a pleasure always to come a pleasure back. having you here thank you karibu sana also yeah. with us is dr madupe taylor pierce i don't know if i've said that properly but <laughs> pardon me if i've not you are the ceo of breakfast club africa you're the guys who do more of coaching on human development thank you for joining us on the program thank you very much eugene R right also with us is Serge Gasore. Serge is actually a social entrepreneur. The reason why he's here, he's, also, he's actually also been a human resource manager at some point. So we'll be talking about his line of thought when it comes to human resource departments. A lot has been said concerning that particular area. I want us to start with that uh, uh, last post that I put out there of this man who has gone through education, mm. went through all the channels that would be seen as what is needed to yeah. actually build his human development mm -hmm. but ended up with no job nothing yeah. and he's out in the streets with a billboard please give me a job my name is this i qualify like this what usually is the problem that leads someone to get to that point i know we have people who are watching us that could be in that particular situation what usually is the missing link yeah. As far mm. as investing in them in the education is concerned, where we see it's needed to yeah. build the development of their career. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. Uh, it's a very good and provocative question that you just asked, uh, uh, Eugene. I think uh, there is no economic development without any um, business development or human capital development. So investing in people is the foundation of, of any development, mm -hmm. be it in an organization or a country or a continent uh, for that matter. So I think for that particular person, number one, I think he did a fantastic job mm -hmm. in just taking matters in his hands. Mm -hmm. So rather than waiting for 
people to do something for him. So he took control of his um, own accountability mm -hmm. and uh, owned what he thought was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. So those behaviors, I believe, where um, people are not taken seriously, um, some people may settle for that. Right. However, uh, I think when it comes to development, it is good that one really takes ownership and says, enough is enough. Mm. It's my time to do something. To do something. Uh, Taylor, I mean, uh, she says that it's very important to invest in their education. That person, someone did invest in his education. Yeah. We have many others who their parents, their guardians have invested in their education as part of one of those stages of human development. Mm -hmm. But most end up <clears throat> In the streets, no job. What usually do you think is the missing link? Why do we get to that point? Why would someone get to that point? I have a degree, but I have no job. We have many people complaining about this. Eugene, that's, there's a fundamental reason why. Mm -hmm. And the reason has to do with the very education mm -hmm. that this young man received. Mm -hmm. See, the challenge we have in Africa is that most of our education systems are borrowed from colonial powers. Mm -hmm. Now the colonial masters wanted us to be good employees. Mm -hmm. They had very little interest in educating us or training us with the skills to be good employers mm -hmm. or entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And the skills and the knowledge that you need to be able to create value, <clears throat> to be an employer, is different from that which you need to become an employee. Mm -hmm. So this young man is the victim of actually two <clears throat> headwinds. One is the fact that he has been educated to become a good employee mm -hmm. instead of to create value. Second is that the bosses of the companies have not done enough for their companies to grow enough so that they would create more new jobs mm. from the existing companies. Mm. And this is what is blighting Africa today, mm. Mm. is that the current companies are not growing as fast as they should. Mm -hmm. Mm. And secondly, we're not creating new companies right. as fast as we should because the people who should create them haven't even been given the skills to be able to create them. Oh. And this is really sad. Mm -hmm. But there's good news. There are certain organizations and certain entrepreneurs who are working actively to change that. To change the narrative. Uh, uh, Serge, I mean, you have sat in front of a potential employee. And we've seen that case. And of course, as much as we're talking about investing in human uh, development from the part of the bosses or the CEOs or the, 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 the owners of companies, Let's start from the pre, before the job comes. The things that needs to be invested in this person to make him either a job creator or someone who's able to add value to a company, wherever he or she goes to. Where do you see the missing link that much as we have, you know, many young people graduating, just recently the University of Kigali, I mean, of Kigali graduated over 1,500. Uh, you know, the Alu Business School of Business has also graduated uh, its first MBA class. So all these people competing for the same, same thing. So exactly. what is the missing link that we are not putting into these young people that would build them to be value additional people when we hire them? Um, thank you, Eugene. Um, I must agree with uh, Millet and Dr. Mudupe. Mm. Uh, we've uh, adopted this culture of... Uh, getting a job from someone. Um, uh, that's why I come and, um, and I say that I have a great respect for that uh, person mm -hmm. who went on the street mm -hmm. and put a, 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 a billboard mm -hmm. saying that he needs a job. Mm -hmm. Because there is, a, there is this book uh, called uh, what, is, what is the Color of Your Parachute? Mm -hmm. Jobs are out there. You just need to find, um, most, and most of the time, that job is near you. Mm -hmm. You just need to find the right strategic uh, uh, you need to use to, to find that job. Mm. They say th there's this saying uh, of, uh, of saying that if you need it that bad, you'll find it, you'll get it. Mm. So, and I don't think that's a, a piece of uh, uh, information a lot of uh, students get when they are in a, they are in a class. 
they are taught to, um, you know, if you, uh, if you pass with gr good grades, you'll get a job mm. from mm. whatever office. Mm. They don't <coughs> teach them to, to go out there and look what is missing if that's a business that has not been created in Rwanda or in your community, think about it. See how you can be a part of the, commu uh, the solution mm -hmm. instead of uh, going to look uh, uh, for a job. For that particular job. Yeah. So uh, I think I, that's a piece of uh, information that, that is needs missing. To be, that that's is one missing. of the yeah. missing links. Yeah. And I, I think I need to um, agree and mm -hmm. uh, add something to that as well. So just like Dr. Mudupe said, um, we need to look at things differently so that we have different results. When? So when do we start looking at them, at them differently? Every time now, I have people here on this show, now, this is what I hear. We need to do this. We need to do that. How, when and I, how? The how is um, by focusing on the person and the individual, the human. The title of today's show is Human Development. Mm -hmm. It's a human. Mm -hmm. So what makes you human or makes you tick? So I think when we have a different approach whereby we recruit people or before we recruit people, we make sure that the choice is resonating with their purpose, mm -hmm. with who they are. Because when there is purpose, it's, uh, um, it's motivating people to actually perform, do better, be retained in organizations, and of course, uh, companies benefit from those individuals if we know for sure that you've got the right place, the right person in the right place at the right time for the right job. Mm -hmm. But the challenge usually is these uh, uh, employers, from what we've seen people tweeting and saying <coughs> on social media, is that they are... Or business oriented. It mm. is more about yeah. you Perfect. performing and delivering your task as opposed to what, can, what value can I add to you, to the person that I hired two years ago, having the same, a certain skill set. What sort of value can I add in here? Why do we have employers having this kind of uh, attitude? Would you be able to explain this? Well, Eugene. <clears throat> The, part of the reason why you have employers with this attitude is because you have a, there's a cost to training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that cost to training for some employers is viewed as a cost rather than an investment. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> for some people, they will say, well, if I train this person, then they leave. Mm -hmm. Then that's money that I've lost. But those are employers or CEOs who are looking rather short term and usually are focused on maintaining rather than growing. And usually if you find those, those kinds of CEOs are the kinds who, if you ask them how have you grown as a leader in the last 12 months, they struggle to answer because they themselves are only maintaining and not growing because for some reason they think they have arrived. Hmm. But so there is a challenge that we have within the leadership ranks of business to really recognize the fact that even if you have the biggest company today in your industry in Rwanda, that's not good enough. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? You're not the biggest in East Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're not the biggest in Africa. Mm -hmm. So you need to dream and you need to see the potential to grow much bigger than your current horizon. Mm -hmm. Now when you start thinking that way, then you're going to realize I have to invest in my people mm -hmm. because I have to make them world class. It's no longer good enough for them to be the best in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. They have to be the best in Africa. Mm -hmm. And that's an investment rather than a cost. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you change your mindset that way, then that happens. Now the second part of it is that sometimes in terms of that training, many of our leaders have not moved towards the realization of understanding that technology now makes that training far cheaper than it used to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because today, if you want to learn any skill, okay, go online. There are massive open online courses. Mm -hmm. There are TED Talks. There are free courses that you can take. You know, you just Google it and you can learn about it. Mm -hmm. But if you go to many companies, they provide the internet, they provide the computer, and if you go there, half of their employees are there watching Nigerian movies. Okay? Yeah. Whose fault is that? That's you, the leader, not the employee, because you create the atmosphere in which that employee feels comfortable mm -hmm. in order to do that. Okay? So there are things that need to be changed. The tools are available to us. Okay. But if you want to keep the tool there, yeah. 
okay, as they say, if you use your iPad only for taking pictures, yeah. then that's all it's good for. Right, right. But we have to do a better job of mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, but of course, uh, you see, for me, the challenge here is, I want to hear from the HR perspective, Serge, because he says there's need for a mindset change for employers. Uh, and, 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 and the reason why he says this is because most employers look at the training of their employees as a cost as opposed to as as opposed to an investment how practical is it to change this what would be needed to change this uh, perception um I, I think first of all um yeah. when when you are thinking about investing in your employees yeah you also need to think a second point which is how you're going to maintain it mm -hmm. because uh, basically, if you train your employees and they end up leaving, that means you failed to maintain them. Mm. Um, so, and most of the time you find out that uh, employers have thought about training, but they don't think about small stuff. Mm. There's other small stuff. Mm. You, you might think, okay, if I give my employee a good salary, oh, then he's going to stay. But you are wrong, uh, mm. technically, because... Uh, most of the uh, most of employees they leave their job because of their bad boss mm -hmm. uh, because they don't get along with their supervisors mm -hmm. or there is something small they are missing so you've got it wrong when you think that you're just gonna invest in training mm -hmm. so uh, uh, employers or CEOs need to start thinking about okay I'm gonna provide training but I'm also gonna provide um, Mindset security, mm -hmm. um, peace of mind mm. yeah. security, mm. uh, and that's how you're going to maintain your employees. That's how you maintain them. Mireille, he speaks of training them and then they leave. This is one of the biggest fears yeah. of, of various uh, employers who mm. feel that I'm going to put all this money in taking these people for an exchange program abroad or wherever, and, and, and they end up going to competition. Mm. Someone would be like, but that's fine. That's okay because they are growing in their career. Why? Why do most employers have that uh, tendency of feeling bad mm. when their employee has matured? Mm. Uh, you know, they got a promotion, they got called to another bigger position. There's always that culture of feeling like, "Why are you leaving us? Yeah. Uh, well, weren't we good enough for you?" Yeah. Can this be changed? Is it, is it, I mean, does it hold water? Are, are mm -hmm. they right to feel bitter? Um, whether they're right to feel bitter, I am not sure, mm -hmm. but I, I agree with Serge. I think um, employee retention is very, very costly, mm -hmm. and it's a very key issue to think about when one has an organization or runs a company. So how, the question is, how do you keep your employees engaged? Mm -hmm. So the technical term is employee engagement. Mm -hmm. So there are various um, aspects of how you can get your employees engaged so mm -hmm. that they don't leave. Mm -hmm. They don't leave with the investments that you have put in, into them. Mm -hmm. So um, I think whether it's being done to your question, I think it is already being done. Mm -hmm. We can learn from um, telecoms or technology companies like Google or Facebook where they do very creative things to engage employees. Mm -hmm. So they involve them, um, regular employees in decision-making processes or in creative exercises. So I'm aware that one of those two companies I mentioned, they have weekly meetings where they get employees engaged in the process of innovation, mm -hmm. in the process of creation, sales, so throughout the whole value chain. Mm -hmm. So the key really is to, to understand again why people are there and um, perhaps run some surveys to find out are they really happy with the position or the role or the company they're in. And if no, then ask them what would make them uh, um, happy. Mm -hmm. So communication is quite, quite important between the um, employers, employees, and of course the management that is in between. Mm -hmm. I mean, y yes, you can as well Let speak to us. To that, yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> See, it's important for employers to understand that people don't quit companies. People quit people. Mm. So when a good employee, one of your stars, leaves the company, mm -hmm. okay, it's because of some issue, just as Mireya suggested, mm -hmm. 
with the supervisor or the supervisor, supervisor, something about that, that either the supervisor is doing or not doing. Now, how many times have you heard of a company in which when an employee leaves of their own, that there is a real inquiry mm -hmm. that supervisors call to task? Mm -hmm. That needs to start happening because the fact is that the balance of power is changing. See, the millennials aren't necessarily looking for, you know, guaranteed security, long-term jobs. Mm -hmm. They're getting used to moving from one place to the other. Mm -hmm. They're going to work on their skills. Mm -hmm. And as that happens, they're going to want to be engaged, and it's no longer just the salary. Now, the money is important, mm -hmm. absolutely, mm -hmm. but they're also looking for other things. Now, everybody is different, mm -hmm. and the burden is on you, the leader, the supervisor to be in communication with your employee to understand that employee's needs mm -hmm. and to provide the environment in which those needs can be met. Mm -hmm. And when you don't do that, then yes, you will lose the employee. Will but go. the worst part is mm -hmm. when you don't train them, an even worse thing will happen. They will be unqualified and they will stay. <laughs> so you can imagine holding that that burden as well exactly right but but then what of a situation or a scenario where you have actually trained them you have actually invested in them and then competition comes mm. and poaches them i mean we see these a lot in various markets uh, i mean how do you deal with that kind of a situation as well, a boss, as to a boss? some extent some level of that is par for the course in the same way that competition can come and poach your customer mm -hmm. but you have to look at your employee that you've trained the same way you look at your customer mm -hmm. when you've trained the employee how many companies when they actually train the employee then leave the employee in the same exact job that they were in mm -hmm. well how do you expect the employee to stay engaged mm -hmm. now somebody else comes and says I'll give you a better position mm -hmm. so it comes back to even as you're training you know the, the, there's a book that says begin with the end in mind mm -hmm. you know even as you're training you and the employee should already have an idea to say, okay, when you do this training, if you complete it successfully and are able to achieve the learning outcomes and the skills, then what will we do? Where are we going to put you so that you can actually use these skills? That understanding needs to have been, been communicated even before the training. I'm going that the company has a plan for me if you look back at the some of the tweets that you got right. that was what some of your people yes. said yes because if I don't know what your plans are for me and you're my boss mm -hmm. then when somebody else comes and says hey I have a long-term plan for you guess what I'm going to do you'll walk yeah. out of course I walk out <laughs> right. it happens in life it happens in relationships and it will happen in work right uh, Serge, could you could you speak to us from the corridors of you know, or, or, or sitting in that chair as a human resource director or manager. These things that we're talking about right here, right now, I want to hear from the horse's mouth. What are the biggest challenges for human resource managers in capacity building in the human development of the employees? What, what are the gaps? Because we've heard that there's that fear of losing them. But we've also been warned of the challenge or the threat of not trading them and still remaining with them right there. What are the real uh, gaps in, in, in this? Um, the, the main problem is when they walk in, um, they are looking for a job. Mm -hmm. uh, this job is you know, for them to be able to put a food on a table. Mm -hmm. um, and you have those that are looking for a job uh, uh, for money, but you have those that have passion for the job they are looking for. Right. And to bring all those together yes. uh, to where they have the same uh, common ground where they understand that, you know, they're there for their benefits, but also for the employees' benefits. So putting them together, it's kind of hard at mm -hmm. the very beginning. Mm -hmm. But, of course, it's through that training where you, mm -hmm. you bring them, you, you share the vision, the mission of the company, uh, and then they get together. Mm -hmm. uh, then you start facing a problem where um, one is not happy with the salary they got mm -hmm. first. Um, the other one is not happy how the supervisor is treating him or her. Um, and then so 
the secret there is to be able to listen to uh, them individually, not as a group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when you uh, listen to them as a group, you, you miss it. Because yeah. one of them might not be happy because mm -hmm. of uh, the salary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other one might be not happy because of the environment. It's a, a rumors uh, environment. Mm -hmm. They are not happy. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of them might not be happy about the breakfast, mm. um, whatever you... So they might not be comfortable speaking about their inner issues when the other right, are there. Right, right. So, so that's where you jump in as a human resource and listen to them individu individually, and then you try to solve their problems based on each person's needs. Need. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yes. I, would, I would like to add something to what he's saying. And I as think, you add that, yeah. we have institutions that are still startups or we have institutions that do not even have the structures mm -hmm. where they have that department called human resource mm -hmm. speak to us a bit about the importance okay. of this department even to the smallest organization that yeah. there is yes yes I think in addition to what he says um, rather than focusing a lot on training I think the most effective tool that um, is now being utilized in uh, developed economies is coaching. Mm -hmm. So looking at the individual holistically, mm -hmm. uh, talking one-on-one, -on -one, having those sessions between your employee and uh, the employer is, is very important. So coaching is really the right way ahead. What's the difference between coaching and uh -huh. training? Someone might be asking me. Yeah, someone will be asking that. Yeah. So the difference, for example, I'll give an example. So training, I am the teacher, you are the students. So I'm giving you my knowledge. Mm -hmm. So you receive knowledge and um, you can choose to do whatever you want with it, mm -hmm. whether to utilize it or just keep it in your brain or in your heart. Mm -hmm. That's training. So coaching is different. It's more of a consultative approach. You come up with the content you tell me what is good for you, what you want, and the coach then utilize tools to help you get where you go, you want to go. So you're here today, A, and you're going to B. So when you engage someone through a coaching mechanism, they are more likely to stay, they are more likely to be loyal because it's them. It's not you talking to them or at them, but it's them talking to you. So they feel valued. Right, that's right. the difference. So I believe, and that's one of the reasons why we do what we do, um, coaching is more effective than just than training. training. All right. yeah. And then to the second part of my question on the importance of the human resource department yes. in, in, in human development yeah. of employees. So uh, again, like I said at the beginning, so there is no business development or economic development without human capital development. So uh, HR is definitely a function that is needed. Where you have more than two or three or five individuals, there is a need for dynamics management or team management so that you allocate individual responsibilities, you manage conflict, you uh, set goals for the teams, but at the same time for the organization as well. So one cannot go without human resources management. Right. So it's absolutely crucial. But I guess if we go one step farther, is perhaps to do human resources differently, to think about uh, people as assets, which we know, but as a key ingredient to more than just the services or products that we provide. Mm -hmm. Right, perfect. And, and Piers, I mean, he, she, she speaks about that, but. Uh, 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 Serge did mention the issue of passion. We have those who are in those jobs because they want the money, and we have others who are there because of the passion. But this word passion, in many instances, has been abused by many employers. Yeah. Uh, we have had employees who have been exploited, they've been overworked, they've been, you know, done sorts of things just because, and they personally also don't see it because they feel that I'm there because I'm passionate about this thing. Please speaks to us about how to identify when you're being used <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and how to not actually fall into that particular trap. Eugene, as I, as I answer that, I need to start with something that Serge said. Yes. He talks about HR, and that's an important function. Mm -hmm. But here's the damaging thing about HR. Mm -hmm many bosses have abdicated their responsibility mm -hmm. and their accountability for the development of their people mm -hmm. to an HR mm -hmm. person. Cool. HR is, a, is there to help, but who is the person that is 
accountable and responsible for any employee's development. Mm -hmm. Is it the HR director or is it the person supervisor? It's the person supervisor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, in many companies, especially as they get larger, you find as they get big HR departments, then certain supervisors or managers feel like, well, that's an HR thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is so wrong, and that's when they start losing their people. That's why you find out that many startups don't lose they're good employees because, because the boss is very yeah. close yes, yes, to yes, HR. Yes. He's always, he or she is always asking, how are you? How are things? Because mm. it's a very tight team. Mm. It's yeah. when they get big, mm. then it says, oh, you now we have an HR person. Processes. That's right. And, yeah. and, the, and the leader starts to abdicate. Yeah. And that's a very dangerous place. Now, so that starts to, to speak to the question of passion. Mm. Can I add something um, about it? Just, just let me finish, let me finish first, oh. yes. So, uh, so when, when you start getting into, part of the reason why sometimes you are not even aware of those danger signs, because there are always danger signs. Mm. There are danger signs when an employee is lacking engagement, and there's a danger sign when the employee is sitting in the office till 11 o'clock at mm. night every night. Mm. Those are both different extremes. But if you as the boss mentally have assigned that role to somebody else then you won't see it and that somebody else has 200 employees to look out to look out mm. you are the one dealing with mm. it you are the person that that employee looks up to whether that employee is a c-level person or a manager or a director you are their boss mm. Mm. so it is your responsibility and you need to have your antenna up to understand when that person is starting to get burnout mm. and to ask and say what's going on I notice, you know, you're looking a little dazed or you've been around staying longer. How are things? And that's your responsibility. If that employee is having problems at home, you need to understand and at least show some concern and care because eventually home problems spill out into job problems. Yeah. Let me pause here so Serge can comment. So Serge can come and then you come back and answer and the like trap the, issue. And I like the antenna one, which I'd yes. like to yes. talk I think on. He, he had a very good point. I almost <laughs> cut him short. Yes. But uh, uh, what I wanted to say is very simple. I think the reason why um, HR end up doing managers' job is because uh, managers are not anywhere to be found. Their doors are locked. Um, and that's when a HR pass by and they, the employee stops mm -hmm. him or her and mm -hmm. say, hey, I'm going through this. Because mm -hmm. the manager is not there. And even if when he's there, the door is closed uh, or he's off all the time. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the problem. Mm. That's so how, wh how, how, what HR would you be advising this. now? I mean, for, for, for an employer who's listening to you, who has an HR, a HR department, uh, who's listening to you? What, what then needs to be done? What needs to be done is to spend less time in the office mm -hmm. uh, and be on the field with your employees mm -hmm. uh, because that's when you get to know what they're going through even at home. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. when you get to, to ask them how their families are doing mm -hmm. because somebody might be doing things uh, dictated by what happened at, at home at night. But when you are working with them, um, on a daily basis, you, you get to hear them, mm -hmm. uh, and then you help them solve the problem, they, whatever issue they are going through. Right. Mary, yeah. you want to talk about the antenna? Yes, and uh, I think it ties into what uh, Serge just said. Um, you can develop antennas by uh, building rapport and relationship with your employees. Mm -hmm. So um, what we advocate for in, in Rwanda or in South Africa, whatever we do business, mm -hmm. is that organizations need to have a system in place where um, line managers and employees need to meet at least once a week. So at least then you get to build that rapport, you communicate better, you know when there is an issue, whether it's one extreme or the other. Mm -hmm. So, and, and to the uh, issue of building um, antennas, or it's another way of cultivating a sensor or a guide, in a guide that helps you to sense whether the employee is a danger or is about to leave, mm -hmm. is really by number one, knowing yourself as a leader. So working out what is my leadership style, is it really in line with my employee as well? Mm -hmm. So leadership coaching is something that really helps people mm -hmm. to, uh, to develop those antennas, yes. among others. The, the, the other challenge, as yeah. you speak about leaders and the leadership and building the antennas, some leaders in these businesses will build those antennas and some mm -hmm. will see these red flags. 
and 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 they would ignore or have an attitude of yeah. he wants to go or she wants to go then they bear the cost let them go yeah i, I mean as they bear the cost that company gets affected yeah. it spills over the economy mm -hmm. in one way or another also mm -hmm. gets to suffer mm -hmm. so how how do we how do we how do we change this attitude if, if you're speaking to someone who has that attitude and doesn't want to even show it or say it and but they're watching us right now what would you tell them um like uh, dr modipa said uh, people quit people right so it, again, it's, a, it's about a relationship, it's about uh, knowing why is that person leaving or why is that person not engaging. So what I will do really is two things. One, be critical about myself. So do a self-assessment myself as a leader. Did I do my utmost best to uh, create an, uh, an environment for that person to flourish, to grow as an individual? Right. So that's number one. So self-assessment as a leader. And at the same time, uh, perhaps asking that person, that person before they exit. I think um, exit interviews is one of the uh, processes that are being used really to understand why are you leaving, what could have been done differently for you to stay. And during that time is where people quit, but then they stayed mm. or they had quit and then returned as well. So it is not over until it's over. It's not over until it's over. <laughs> See, one of the, the other things that uh, we need to understand, when you hear a leader talk like that, just what you exactly, you know, if they want to go, let yeah. them go. Yeah. That's an indication of a lack of emotional yeah. intelligence mm -hmm. right. in the leader. Mm -hmm. um, to put it even less nicely, it's a sign of lazy leadership mm. because you don't want to put in the work to understand that at the end of the day, mm. a company, the biggest asset of any company is its people. Okay, everything else can be replicated. Yes, and so when you when 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 you hear that comment, that lack of emotional intelligence can stem from pride yes. in the leader. Yes. Just saying that because. Yes. She or he does not feel that you know they need to you know count out to an employee. In some cases, it's because the leader did not have the courage to have fired the employee. Maybe it was a poor performing employee, and you did not even have the courage. So now you're actually hoping that the employee will go on his own or her own, mm -hmm. which again means that there's been an opportunity cost because that employee has been messing things up already. Mm -hmm. So if the employee is not bad enough that you should have already fired him, then they're good enough that you should be working to make sure that the employee can stay. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so when a leader says that, that immediately is an indication that this leader needs coaching mm -hmm. because coaching helps the leader to become more emotionally intelligent. Yeah. And that's very important for leadership success. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, Serge, is it practical to, uh, you know, as, as, a, as a HR person, when, when, when someone comes to you, you have actually done what you could have done as an institution, but they say, you know what, they want to leave. And, and, and she says, it, it, it's never, never. It's not over it's until, not over it's, until over. it's over. <laughs> when... Or at what point do you think institutions should give up on someone or, or on their employees? When they should give up on yes. somebody? Yes. Um, when you've uh, invested your time in that person over and over and you keep fading. Um, but I'll tell you, um, bo bosses or ma uh, managers are the bad ones mm. uh, most of the time. Mm. Because let me give you a, a quick example. How many places in whatever uh, company you've worked in, you've seen uh, managers do evaluation every 30 days? Mm -hmm. Because uh, in HR perspective, you're supposed to do 30 days of evaluation on your employee, uh, 60 days on your employee, uh, 90 days on your employee. That's when you call that person in your office. You sit down on your, in your office or whatever work area, mm -hmm. um, and you ask them how they are feeling, mm -hmm. how they feel about the job. Mm -hmm. uh, ha have they seen what they thought they would see? Um, have you met their uh, expectations? And then 
they tell you, they give you feedback, right. and, you, and you give them feedback as right. well. Mm -hmm. That's when you start, um, that's when you cut them before they leave you or before they fall into bad um, habits. Right. Mm. So, uh, to me, if you see with somebody three times a year and they are not producing, then it's time to to let them go. To let them go mm -hmm. because you've invested your time in them and your resource. So then it's time for them to go. Right. So. Mira, he brings it a very important issue of evaluation. Yeah. In some of these streets of uh, employment, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen or I've heard of scenarios where that thing called evaluation is used as a tool of for, for scaring employers <laughs> to work harder so that they don't get a letter at the end of the of the evaluation. Tell me the dangers of, yeah. of, of using this as this kind of a tool of, of pushing them so hard. You know, I'm going to evaluate you. And if you fail, if you don't hit 50% or 30%, oh, yeah. you're going to go. I'm going to give you a letter. Mm. What are the dangers of using this as a tool of productivity or pushing for productivity? Yes, I think evaluations are needed um, because it's a, it's a balance. It helps you scaling what you are doing as an employee or employer. So evaluations have a good place. Now, the danger of it is when they are not used properly or the line manager is not utilizing that tool very well to inspire, to encourage and to motivate the person right. to be more productive. So, um, so the danger is when you, you don't maybe set the, um, the, the, the evaluation mechanism correctly, meaning the scoring. So I, I'm a great believer of the fact that you co-create with your employee. So as you set your evaluation tools, and involve your employee as well. So there is a minimum level on that list that will have to be set um, by the employer. However, at some level, engage your employee so that they are more uh, motivated to outperform. Mm -hmm. right? So at the end of the day, what you want is to get your employee outperform whatever scale you have put up or score you've put up on your evaluation. Mm -hmm. So um, the other side of that coin is if the evaluator himself needs some emotional intelligence coaching as well. So it all depends on who does what mm -hmm. and how. And how. Yeah. How do we not make them as a tool of scaring employees <laughs> to performing? I mean, what are the dangers of having it in that sense? You know, Eugene, every tool can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Every tool. Mm -hmm. um, every tool, when used properly, is useful. Right. When used improperly, mm -hmm. is dangerous. From a knife that you use to cook in the kitchen, that can be used to stab somebody. Mm -hmm. To fire that you use to cook, that can burn a house. And what, what makes the tool useful? Number one, it's the training of the person who's using the tool. Mm -hmm. Number two, it's the motivation yeah. of the person using the tool. Mm -hmm. And those things, the training, and the motivation, and then of course the empowering of the person, because mm -hmm. you could take the tool from the person's hand. Now, who is the person that can create the atmosphere for all three of these to occur? Mm -hmm. It's the leader. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to these things, leadership is the cause, everything else is just the effect. Mm -hmm. So your, the answer to your question, Eugene, is look no further than the person who's leading the company. Because if she or he practices these things with her direct reports, mm. then it will float down. Mm. Many times, my mother always says, when the fish stinks, it stinks from the head. the head. So when you find those things happening, don't look very far. The buck stops with the boss, yes. with the leader. I, um, I just want to add something very small. Mm -hmm. uh, they can correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, that tool is made to where you're supposed to start by saying thanks to your employee, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're supposed to start by uh, making uh, the employee feel like they are uh, they're great asset to, mm -hmm. to you before you can give them feedback mm -hmm. how bad they are doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, the tool is not made to scare people right. unless they, are, they use it wrong. So unless they use it wrongly. Yeah. So uh, you've spoken a lot about the leader, the backstopping of the leader, but now the major question is who now does the human development for this person called the boss, the leader? 
Mireille, how, who does that? Who how does that? Yes. Um, I think the leader, first of all, one needs to grow. So growth starts with you wanting to grow. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't grow, you die. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they say. So when you stagnate, you die. So you need to know that you need actually to grow. So um, starting with you wanting to be trained or coached is, is one thing. And I think that's what uh, BCA Breakfast Club Africa mm -hmm. does so well mm -hmm. uh, across Africa where they have a specific um, meetings and gatherings for CEOs who are the top of the the, the organization. So um, I, I think what needs to be done is really, if there are viewers watching who are leaders, mm -hmm. is to understand that if you are in that position of leadership, mm -hmm. it's not the end of the world. Right. So the, it, there is continuation to your uh, journey of growth. Right. So that's one of the main things perhaps Dr. Mudupe can right. add to that. Okay. One of the tragedies, frankly, of Africa is that we have not really created services for those leaders. Mm -hmm. You know, we've assumed, you know, they know. The, yes, because you are a boss, you yes. are Buana. Yes. Ah, everything you say is correct. <laughs> so, Buana, <I'm> your boss. <laughs> you know, the day you are promoted to the CEO, all yeah. of a sudden, you know, this halo of knowledge just falls on your head mm. and you know the answer to everything. Mm. Of course, that could not be farther from the truth. Right. Yeah. And, and leaders need support. Now, one of the things that Western countries have mm. figured out is this. This is why they have coaching. Mm. This is why they have organizations where leaders get together mm -hmm. and not just get together to discuss football and to talk, mm -hmm. but to actually learn together. And that has mm. to be facilitated by a professional who knows how to handle different characters. Mm. Mm. And this is what Breakfast Club Africa mm. was formed to do. And this mm. is what we have started doing. We're mm. doing it in Ghana, in mm. Kenya, mm. in Malawi, in Sierra Leone. We're going to be in Nigeria and we're opening up in, in Rwanda this year mm. because we bring leaders together mm -hmm. in very small groups. Mm. Again, it's not about networking. It's not about being in the in club. It's about learning together. Now for that, you as a leader have to have one particular characteristic. You have to believe that you have not arrived yet. If you think you know it all, then you will not be open to learning and growing. So for our leaders, this is one of their biggest challenges. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But we know that there are leaders in Rwanda who don't believe that they have arrived yet. And they're ready to learn. And they are ready yeah. to grow. Mm -hmm. And they will grow by learning from each other mm -hmm. in a protected space where they can learn from each other. And also they will grow by benefiting from executive coaching. Right. Serge, as I plan to go to read some of the tweets that we already have, I want you to share with us uh, where do we move on from here. We've had people complaining. We've had a lot of people talking about what they see at their places of work and what they've even heard from their friends and colleagues from, from, from a leadership position as a HR and even a social entrepreneur yourself. Where do we go from here? What needs to be done moving forward? Um, I think they said it right. Um, First of all, we yes. need to understand that we yes. need to learn from each other. Yes. Uh, we need to understand that we don't know everything. Right. Mm. Uh, you could be learning from uh, your fellow uh, manager right. from another company. Mm -hmm. You could be going to take classes uh, online yes. uh, to understand what uh, you're supposed to be doing. Um, also, if we decide to... Um, treat our employees as uh, our greatest asset, right. uh, we also need to come up with a good list of um, um, what the people need. Because we get it wrong sometimes. We, we think we know it all, we know what they want. We know what but they it's important want. to hear from them, what do you want? What do you want? And right. then you provide it. Then That's you provide right. it. Yeah. Let's read some of the tweets that we already have right here. Coming through Joel Ngoga. Uh, he says that the best in focus RW show in recent memory. Thank you so much. The panel is on point, I'm sure. Favorite quote, people don't quit companies, people quit people. This is Dr. Modupe. Thank you so much, Joel, for that particular uh, uh, tweet right there. Let's read from uh, this uh, gentleman right here. Evrad says, employees who believe that management is concerned about them as a whole person, not just as an employee, are more productive more satisfied, more fulfilled. Satisfied employees 
leads to profitability. I think we all agree on this one. All right, let's take a look at another one right here from Ephraim. Ephraim says that economic productivity and growth depends on people. But the challenge is, do we really act, do we walk the talk? I mean, we have a beautiful, beautiful coined words here. But why don't we walk the talk? Well, then it's hard to walk the talk. It's, much it's easier, hard to believe it's and, much and, and act to use, what we say. It's much easier to use people mm -hmm. as just, you know, tools, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Right. Okay? In the year 2000, the largest retail company in the world was mm -hmm. Walmart. Mm -hmm. There was a very tiny, small company mm -hmm. that started to do retail in books called Amazon. Right. Okay? Amazon started to gain market share. By 2000, mid-2000s, as it grew, Walmart decided, ah, the answer is we should have a Walmart.com. Mm -hmm. Now, Walmart had way more money than Amazon. They had way more capital, etc. And so they went in to compete with Amazon. Mm -hmm. Amazon still cleaned their clock. Today, Amazon.com is the biggest retail company. Mm -hmm. Why? When one company had all the assets, all the stuff that you What want, was the secret? The secret was Amazon.com had better people, mm, mm. and they invested in their people, and they, invested and they had people. satisfied people. Let's continue with work. this. Yes, let's continue with this tweet. Because for me, it pains me when people write these beautiful things, but then mm. on, go on the ground, it, it's not what, what, what people are doing out there. So he says that the higher the level of human capital is, the higher the level of performance. And of course, employees are primary assets which should be appreciated, managed, and developed as true assets and not liabilities. Serge, why have most... HR people slept on the job in actually appreciating. And what, what, what would be done to show someone that they are feeling uh, or they are being appreciated by a company? Um, uh, first of all, you, you have to understand, uh, uh, you have to kind of like put yourself in their, right. uh, in their place mm -hmm. um, and treat them as a human being. Mm -hmm. right. He's what uh, employee wants. Right. Uh, let me use this analogy. Yes. When a baby is born, um, what do you wish for your baby? To you, be the best. You want your baby to come, mm -hmm. be happy at the house. Mm -hmm. You want the baby to eat healthy. That's what you should be doing to your employees. You want your baby to grow. And, so you should treat them as your own children. Children. Like if yeah. they were yours. Yes. You want your baby to go to school when mm -hmm. it's time. You want your baby to be promoted. Mm -hmm. Uh, go to the next level. Mm. So that's what you should do. It's right. very simple mathematics. Very simple mathematics. Fiona Mbawazi, a great colleague in the profession, says people don't quit jobs. They quit people. They took the job uh, wanting, loving it. Investments in people leads to the company's success. So it's always a competition, nepotism, favoritism. Of course, uh, let's talk about the importance of even mm -hmm. celebrating an employee yeah. who gets a better job or a better position somewhere. Mm -hmm. We've seen in other situations where they are celebrated, there's a farewell party done, but we have others who would not do that because they mm -hmm. feel that yeah. you have left to go and work now for competition. Just very briefly, how do we change this mindset? How do we change this perspective? Yeah, I think, I mean, the fear, perhaps, mm -hmm. insecurity yes. might be at the root of that. So yes. if it's been covered already, yes. but if that leader is insecure, is not quite sure about what they have given, so the, the ripple effect of that is that behavior. Right. So how you change that mindset, again, it's been covered, is just really to um, engage more with your employees to find out at the beginning of the quarter, of the year, et cetera, uh, what do you want the success to be like mm -hmm. in three months or in a year's time? And then you follow so up. You, exactly. So you know that as an employer, you have done all you needed to do and you can say goodbye and part in happiness in happiness right. uh, uh, we've had employers who say we have team buildings every end of the month we go out in the lake we eat <laughs> brochette fritti we enjoy ourselves i have organized training every month these people get trained and I bring people here and they sit back and say that this is enough do you think that is enough the results never lie mm -hmm. yeah. when Again, the question is, team building is a tool, okay? How is it being used? Mm -hmm. What is it being used for? Mm -hmm. Some people abuse it. Mm -hmm. In some places, they do team building just so they can collect per diem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, it's a, but it's a question of what are you using it for? And also, once again, for the CEO, 
do you take oh. personal mm -hmm. accountability for mm -hmm. the results? Mm -hmm. Or is it something that you say, oh, HR manager, organize something so that that this way my people happy. will not yes. complain yes. Yes. that we haven't done anything in a while. Yes. Well, of course, if you take that attitude, then you're not going to get much out of it. Right. right. So, so it's very important. And also to the point that uh, one of your Twitters made about sort of nepotism, favoritism. Mm -hmm. See, one of the reasons mm -hmm. why these things sometimes happen in politics is because the company is not growing enough. Mm -hmm. Because if the company is not growing, here's what happens. At every level, the number of jobs at the next level gets smaller. Right. So when it's, it's the C-suite, you have four people competing for the CEO job, etc. Well, of course you're going to have politics. Mm. Okay? But what should be happening is you as the CEO should be growing. And as you grow and you grow the company, then you create more types of jobs. So instead of these people having to compete and claw at each other for the same job, in fact, you're the one saying, I need you to grow faster because I have something new for you to work on. Right. right. But that only happens when you as the leader have a growth mentality. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a growth mindset, then all these problems start to show themselves. We'll all be fighting for that same position. I mean, we, we, we have to go. Alice is already shouting in my, screen, my ears and says we need to go. <laughs> very briefly, very briefly, in a split half of a second, mm -hmm. just where do we go? Quick final thoughts. Coaching, coaching is the way forward. Coaching is the way forward. Yeah. Uh, change. We need to uh, uh, switch from a culture where manager is like God and then employee is like trash. I think uh, changing the culture, the tradition is the key. Is the key. One last one. My wish for CEOs in Africa, including Rwanda, of course, is that every year, they will invest in themselves to become better leaders. Great. Thank you so much. What a better way to finish that one. Of course, thank you for tweeting. The tweets are still on. The conversation is going on. Keep tweeting. The hashtag is in focus. RW will definitely be able to continue this conversation. I'm hoping that you have had some lessons uh, right here on this particular show and that is why we are here for that because of time we're going to leave and of course pave way for the news and english coming in up just a bit my name as always is eugene